Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to 3 News Now. It's Friday, December 18th, and we have made it to another Friday. Thank you for being here. I'm Stephanie Haney. I have your top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. We start off with what might be surprising news to some people out of the Ohio House of Representatives. The Ohio House has passed a Stand Your Ground bill, which would expand the right to shoot to kill in self-defense. Now, Remember, this is just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to a bill becoming a law. So the House has passed this. It doesn't necessarily mean it will become a law here in Ohio. But if it does, it would remove a legal requirement that people try to retreat from a confrontation before shooting to kill when that person believes that they are acting in self-defense. So this passed the Ohio House of Representatives late last night around 11.30 p.m. by a vote of 52 to 31. House Republicans passed this bill despite opposition from law enforcement, prosecutors, and anti-gun violence activists. This was therefore a victory for firearms lobbyists and also gun owners associations. A few Republicans did join Democrats in opposing the legislation. Those who did oppose it, specifically Democrats, say that this incentivizes shootouts when avoiding violence is an option now remember this bill still does to meet need to be approved by the senate if it is to be presented before governor mike dewine to potentially be signed into law and what governor mike dewine would do when presented with such a bill is not clear at this time but we do know at this time a stand your ground bill has been passed by the ohio house and these measures have been very controversial especially in the recent months around the country Here in Ohio, a Columbus nursing home is the first in Ohio to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. COVID-19, excuse me, vaccine. Governor Mike DeWine spoke at a briefing outside of the Crown Point Care Center in Columbus today as the vaccine was administered to residents staying there. Ten nursing homes across the state will be the first among the first in the nation to receive the vaccine. This is part of a federal program to vaccinate nursing home residents and staff. Now, remember, DeWine previously told us that this was scheduled to begin in Ohio on Monday, but because Ohio was invited to begin and be a part of this earlier process from the federal government, this was able to happen today in Ohio. So. Great day for those long-term care facilities here in Ohio. There's a list of the long-term care facilities that will be first getting the vaccine. That's up on WKYC.com. Now, more doses of the vaccine are expected to arrive in Ohio on Monday. That's according to Peter Van Runkel with the Ohio Healthcare Association. He represents long-term care facilities in the state of Ohio. Healthcare workers at several hospitals in the state received their first doses of the vaccine this week. This is the Pfizer vaccine, of course. That's the vaccine that's already been given emergency use approval by the FDA. And everyone is anxiously awaiting that news from the FDA on the emergency use approval of the Moderna vaccine, which yesterday we learned that a panel of experts had unanimously approved or recommended that the Moderna vaccine be approved for that emergency use authorization from the FDA. That brings us to today's coronavirus numbers here for the state of Ohio. These are just in from the Ohio Department of Health. Ohio now has over 600,000 reported cases of COVID-19. That is official. The deaths, however, are down and the active hospitalizations are down today. So here's the numbers we have today. 9,684 new reported cases of COVID-19 and our positive rating for the last seven days is averaging at 14.1 percent. That data is as of Wednesday. That's also down from what we've been seeing and the latest daily positive rate is 13.4 percent. So again this means for all the COVID tests that are being done on Wednesday 13.4 percent of them came back positive. The number of reported deaths is also down over the last 24 hours. That number Unfortunately, though, still 73 Ohioans reported to have lost their lives related to COVID-19. That number of total deaths in Ohio, almost at 8,000 now, just on the cusp of it. And we've seen 398 new hospitalizations in the last 24 hours. The total number of people who are in the hospital right now is under 5,000. It's the first time we've seen that in a while, so that is presumably good news. That number is 4,940 right now, and out of that total, 1,172 people are currently being treated in the ICU. We've also seen a slight increase in the percentage of hospital beds that are available, which makes sense with less people in the hospital related to COVID-19. 27% of the hospital beds in the state are currently available right now. 
Now let's take a look at the national and the global numbers for COVID-19. These come in from Johns Hopkins University. In the U.S., there are now 17,293,160 reported cases of COVID, and the total number of deaths is now at 311,993. Now remember, we talk about this each day. The U.S. has 4% of the global population, but the percentage of the global cases and the global deaths continue to tick up here in the U.S. Right now, we have 23% of the global cases of COVID-19 and 18.7% of the global deaths related to COVID-19. The global numbers are 75,298,991 COVID-19 cases and 1,669,033 COVID-19 deaths. Switching gears now to the sports world, something that we've been talking about all week is the Cleveland baseball team officially confirming that the name will change, though it might not be for the 2021 season, but it is happening. They will no longer be called the name that they had been called for the last 105 years. Well, today, the manager, Terry Francona, spoke at the MLB winter meetings about the name change. Now, Francona has a long history with Cleveland's baseball team. He's the son of a former Cleveland baseball player. He played for the team himself, and now he's been the manager of the team for the past eight seasons. Here's what he had to say about what he's particularly proud of when it comes to the name of our baseball team. He says he's proud of the organization for trying to do the right thing. He thinks that's what's important for people to understand is that they're really proud of the first name of our team, which is Cleveland. He went on to say maybe in the next year or so people will be able to have fun with a new name and he just doesn't ever want it to get lost in the conversation that they're not trying to be disrespectful to anyone. They're trying to be the opposite of disrespectful of course by respecting people of the heritage that had been offended by the previous name and also respecting the fans who have a long storied history of rooting for Cleveland's baseball team now Francona was one of the first voices in the organization to publicly support changing the name when the franchise first announced that it was discussing the issue back in July Here's something that you like to hear. One of the Cleveland Browns is doing his part to support a good cause. Cleveland Browns tight end Harrison Bryant has teamed up with a nonprofit organization beyond the game to raise money to distribute mental health journals to Ohio students. Beyond the Game is a nonprofit organization that focuses on teaching student athletes the impact that sports can have on their lives off the field. Well, the founder of that, Devin Jordan, who happens to be a friend of mine from quite some time ago, we went to junior high school together back in Canton, he created something called the Mental Manual. This is a 365-day journal that has exercises to help students focus on positivity, mental toughness, enthusiasm, responsibility, teamwork, all of these things, and it's for the entire year of 2021. So, Cleveland Browns tight end Harrison Bryant is teaming up with him to raise money because the goal is to distribute 5,000 of these journals to Northeast Ohio students and student athletes. So to do that, they've created an auction style fundraiser that's online through tomorrow, through Saturday, December 19th. That goes through at least 8 p.m. And you can bid on lots of very cool memorabilia there. There's a painting of Harrison Bryant scoring a touchdown during the Cincinnati Bengals game. There's also a painting of Miles Garrett. There's some signed merchandise from Baker Mayfield, also some Ohio State University signed merchandise because Devin Jordan is a former football player for the Ohio State University. So you can check all of that out. And if you don't find anything that you like to bid on, you can also just donate if you would like to support the cause. That's all linked on WKYC.com. And you can see my full conversation with Harrison Bryant and Devin Jordan there. And an update on a story that we talked about earlier this week. The Cleveland Cavaliers unveiled a banner proposal to the city of Cleveland for that Sherwin-Williams global headquarters wall that you see right when you come into downtown Cleveland. And it has been unanimously approved. The new banner will say, For the Love for the land and it features diverse hands gripping a basketball here's what the Cavs had to say about the new design it's an invitation a rally cry a call to action to embrace unity and come together in a common bond for love for each other and our city and the Cavs say that the message speaks to the power of teamwork so it's expected to be installed on that wall in the middle of January 2021 so we'll see that up there very soon it's a beautiful design we have that up on wkyc.com as well so this will replace the existing 
all for the land banner, which is a tribute to Cleveland's landmark Guardian of Transportation. And that has photos that were submitted by Cavs fans and Clevelanders. And that was put up in September of 2018. Fun fact, this particular banner, which will be up in the middle of January, is one of the first initiatives for the Cavaliers' new creative director, Daniel Arsham, and he started in that role in November. He's a Cleveland native and an internationally renowned artist. He worked in collaboration with the Cavs' in-house graphic designer, Jay Wallace, and the Cavs' creative team to design this campaign. It's absolutely beautiful. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out on WKYC.com and let us know what you think about it so we can feature your comments. That's something we'll be talking about on What's New at 5 p.m. in the Clicking in Cleveland segment with our trending stories. And also, here's a reminder, if you haven't done it yet, check out the Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney podcast. That's a new podcast that's been going on for a couple weeks now, just launched, and it's longer conversations with insiders and experts about the things that you want to know about here in Northeast Ohio, some great hidden gems, and also who you should be following on social media. So just search for Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney wherever you get your podcasts. Particularly interesting topic this week, talking about dating in the pandemic. And tomorrow, when the new episode drops, I'll be talking about people who have had COVID-19 for a long time. These people like to be referred to as long COVID patients. You might have heard them referred to as long haulers, but... I talked with an infectious disease expert from Cleveland Clinic, and she said the term that we're using now are long COVID patients. So that's what I'll be calling them. And you'll want to check that out. That drops Saturday morning. And I'll have a little preview on the early morning show tomorrow, so you can check that out as well. All right, that's it for 3 News Now today for Friday, December 18th. Everyone have a great afternoon. Have a wonderful weekend. I hope you're all getting your holiday stuff in order. Happy Hanukkah to everyone celebrating that and all of the holidays coming up. I'll see you back here on Monday. Stay safe and be well. I'm Stephanie Haney.